Greetings and welcome to Alfredo's Godot 4 tutorial and code along. In this video, I will, you will be able to follow my design process step by step for a great inventory system of the game I was recently fascinated in, uh, with some of my own twists, of course. Okay, to start it off, we'll start with an empty project and start with the UI. And we'll name this UI Inventory. Create a structure for it. Um, in this case, I'll, for simplicity's sake, I'll use a colored rect instead of um, a texture rect. You can always use your own texture rect or some sort of backgrounds and texture. Let's give it some darker color and let's set the value into somewhere around um, these numbers as whole numbers for no particular reason. Okay, let's make it slightly darker. All right, and we can probably move this around a little. Now let's make a margin container. Make sure it's filled. And then let's create a VBox container. And separate into a horizontal H box container and a, I believe, scroll bar container. Scroll container, <coughs> same distance. And this is where we will be putting the header. This is where you would put buttons to close or minimize, depends on what you're doing. For now, let's just give it a button. Okay. And for this, let's override the theme to make it somewhere around, um, let's go, let's go, let's go about a hundred. All right, the button, if I could remember where to change the size of it, it'd be much easier. I think X, let's give it a pretty big one. And let's also make this into a center. There we go. I'll say 150. Too much. Okay, so maybe 50. That looks about right. Okay. Now this also, we'd want to fill it. Uh, I believe it's done somewhere differently. There. Okay, expand it to the full range and then let's add a grid container. And this is where we'll be putting our actual values, <coughs> actual slots. All right, now that we have a, um, a UI ready, let's create a main scene for it. And let's add the UI into it. So this will be the main, save it. And save this into the inventory scene. Add this into, this is just for housekeeping, not really necessary. But um, make sure it still runs, good. Okay, so let's start uh, creating the individual scenes in there that we'll be needing to make this a great inventory. All right, first, we'll be needing a slot. How I'm making the slot is just with a very simple texture rectangle and a another um, color rectangle underneath it. Okay, so now let's set a few things. Inside the item or inside the folder, I will be adding a few assets such as, I believe, um, here it is. There we go. All right, let's create an asset. In here, I'll be putting in inventory texture and a few images, which looks something like uh, these. All right, let's put the 
drag the icons in there and we'll be having that. It's pretty good. Okay. So let's keep uh, skill on. Do not keep size, ignore size. So that will be the same size as what we set it to. And let's create a slot that's the size of 50 by 50. And change the color rect to fill. So that's completely covered. This will be acting as a filter so that we can change the color of it when we need it to. Okay. Looks pretty good. Let's keep that as the. Okay, let's rename it <laughs> into the slot. And uh, let's remain, rename this to status filter. So when this is here in the grid container, once you duplicate it with control D, you'll be able to have a few uh, different things. But what we want is a horizontal uh, horizontal expansion. So let's change the column size into eight and see if that makes things better. Yes. Okay. So this will automatically populate this. And we don't want the size or the little space in between them. So in that sense, we will try to override this with the zero separation. And let's see if that looks better. Looks quite good to me. All right. So now let's change the slot into a pack scene, which is save branch to scene. Let's call it slot. Very good. Right, let's open that up and get ready for some coding. Oh, we don't need this anymore. Now we will be starting to make a few scripts, uh, starting with the inventory. Let's call it inventory, looks very good. And let's go to the slot. Also create another script for this, calling it slot. All right, we'll start to set a few variables and of various signals that I'll be needing in a bit. I'll explain what they do once we use them. All right, this is the first signal. And I think another one for exiting. Then let's set the on ready variable into let's have a path to the filter. It's not too complicated, just for housekeeping. And a few things we'll definitely need slot ID to identify what this one is and is hovering. This is a way of um, overriding the mouse and exit and entered in the control node. Then we will make an enum for different states uh, this item has, or this slot has, which I believe I'll call it uh, default, taken, and free. And then we'll have a separate variable to store the state of the slots, initialize it to default. Sorry. Default. And then I think that should Spelling error. And one more for the item stored in, inside. Okay, let's go back to inventory. And first, we'll try to instantiate all these slots in code. Let's see how that would work. We will be using. First, let's save um, a few variables as well. It's called slot scene and put the scene we saved earlier here and then let's put a few things so what we want to do is we want to instantiate a few um, let's say this many of slot scenes call it a function name create slots This should be a very simple one. Why does it give me a I in range? Okay. All right, let's instantiate a new slot. We've already preloaded. Did we preload this? I don't think we did. I think that's what we're supposed to do here. I believe so, yes. 
and then instantiate a new slot. Scene dot instantiate. And then let's set the slot ID. Um, this is for housekeeping, and for later I'll be calculating them, calculating grid values with these. So let's um, change that. They will be uh, they will be given a ID referring to a grid value, and I'll just for simplicity sakes. Uh, calculate the size of the grid array so every new slot added in is just um, the next index what was i doing okay. then let's create an array name this very good and then just another variable called let's call it um grid container this is where we'll be putting all the Instantiated slots to have a good reference to them when I need them. Grid container. <sighs> Sorry, what I meant is I will be creating a pointer to the path of the grid container we created. Container. Which, let's call it this. And let's add this as the child of the grid container we have. And we will connect the two signals I've created here. But um, let's not do that. Just let's see if this works first. Always, always check before you've made too many, too much progress so that you know where you've made a mistake. That's my experience, at least. All right, so far the creating process, the creation process is no problem. Uh, let's add in the two mentioned signals. Slot entered. We'll connect that to a function. Let's call it on slot mouse entered. And another one very similarly called exited. And I'll be creating those functions in a moment. So what we want to do here is do something, right? When the um, when the cursor is entering the that specific slot, and let's do another one here. All right. So what we want to happen right now is to make sure these uh, signals are connected properly. And to test that, we will create a set color method in this um, in the slot script. Basically, what the set color script I wanted to do is effectively change the color of it. So let's create a function name set color. I think what I want to have is a default value. Defaults. And we don't really need a return value for this. Let's call it, give it a default parameter or default sign, blah, blah, blah. And then let's do a match state. Uh, let's call it states dot default. We just have set it to no color filter dot color set that into a new color variable let's create the color white uh, this is for the completely transparent default so it just looks like the the way it is okay the second one we'll call it um another one just to, this one is for taken taken and this one is for free taken let's give it red and for free let's give it green okay so these are set 
and let's see if we can call them upon mouse centered. <coughs> so on mouse centered, it is giving it a slot. All right, so let's call it just arguments and same thing here. So whatever slot we entered, it's called the set color method and pass it in the uh, the state of it we want, which is, I believe, states dot um, on entered. Let's just turn it red, so it's taken. And on exit, let's call it free. Okay, so right now, nothing's happening. Let's see where we went wrong. Let's take a look at the slot enters, slot exited. Oh, right, we didn't set the transparency. Let's give it a 0.2 and see if they're changing. They're still not changing, okay. Oh, I completely forgot to actually put in the the emit function part. It's quite dumb of me. All right, so what happens is let's check the rectangle. This uh, slot is hosted. See if it has a point, which the point we're looking for is the global mouse position. So if our mouse is in there, let's create a, we already have the hover is hovering variable. So basically it's checking it. If it's not already hovering, which means it just entered, um, we will change the is hovering into true. And let's emit the signal of <laughs> slot entered. And let's give it itself uh, to go along with it. And if it's not, Basically, if it's exiting, right, if it's still hovering while well, it's leaving the rectangle, that means it's just exited. Let's call this and change the value of is hovering to false. And same thing, emit signal of uh, slot exited. And also give it itself. I believe that should work just fine. Perfect. Now, wherever our mouse is going, it's like it's been setting into a taken and set the rest into uh, green, which is free. Good. Now, obviously, we don't want them to all be in there. So let's create a clear all method. Second thought, uh, I think I'll just change this into default and leave the rest for later so it looks pretty good all right next we'll be making a data handler to deal with all the input values and the saved item data that we will be using for this grid inventory uh, let's first create a item json file and i'll be doing that with the handy google google sheets let's take a look at the little JSON file I have. We have an item ID for identifying which item we have. We have the item name. We have a random value I just put in here. And the most important part is the grid information. To do the spinning grid, we will use a default grid anchor, which is zero, zero. And the other values are referenced uh, with respect to the zero, zero point. For example, the zero, zero, uh, zero one and negative one zero is the equivalent or it will represent the area value of an image um, that it looks like this so the center part will be called the zero zero grid and this will be the uh, we're using the xy coordinate of usual gaming or i guess programming standard which is to the right is positive x and to the bottom is positive y Okay, so basically uh, use your preferred way of creating this 
into a JSON file. I'm using the handy dandy export sheet data. I believe if you just search Google Sheet export JSON, you'll be able to do that. So once you export it, you save it into a JSON file and save it into a, a data. I'll create a data file here. And go to my <laughs> project folder, create a data, and I'll save the item data in here. Now let's go and create a new script. Let's name it data handler. And we will load this as a auto load. Look for it, we have data handler here. Okay. So what we need to do here is simply load the value, uh, load the, the JSON file we prepared. All we have to do is uh, create a few functions to do that for us. For the sake of modular and being able to reuse them later, I'll create separate functions for them. We want a load data, which loads a specific file with the um, the path we're given and another one for the specific task of loading the grids into a specific structure. And let's give it a few variables that we'll access from other parts of our scene. First one we'll need is a item data. And I'll need a grid data. And then the path on ready item data path and i think it will be in where did i put it there we go lovely don't really need the process function all right let's make the load data first you're a very standard So if we, we use file access for this, um, if we don't find the file, let's do, uh, let's do arguments, just remind us that there's something that's going wrong. Item data file not found. All right, for, now let's do, Open file with file access. Let's do open. Let's put in the path and let's do the file access read and file access dot. Uh, we just need to read. Okay, and let's put item data. Use JSON to parse the string and put item data file to get as text. Okay, now we have loaded it into here, something wrong. Uh, item file data. File data. Just to get rid of the um, annoying error, I'm going to create this real quick. Okay, let's go back here. Path not declared. Oops. I have happed. Make sure to everything standard. Okay, I believe this has been read. Item data saved, and we can close the data file. That's a good habit. All right, just to see if we have it, let's do a quick print. Item data, see if it's properly loaded. And I should be able to see the values that are not there. I think I'm, did I actually set it as an auto load? I did not, of course. Okay, now it should be loaded and the values are loaded in. Very good. 
and let's do a set grid data. So what we're doing is taking individual items in the item data. And setting them or separating them into a more readable array to iterate through. What we're doing, take the point in each of the grid values. I think we can access item with the item ID and look for the grid part. Okay. And because I formatted with um, dash lines, I'll be able to split them. dash and let's save the temp grid array with a splitting them with the commas and then we can push it back into our actual grid data once again using the item id as Uh, it's a dictionary, so let's do that. Save it in there. All right. So once we're done with this, we should be able to see something like adjust the grid data values. Let's see if that works. Looks good. We've parsed all of them and saved it into a easily iteratable, iterable, whatever the word is pronounced, <coughs> um, structure. Now, now that we're done with loading the data, let's actually do something with the data by creating another new scene. Let's, this one is very simple. I'll just use a 2D node to create something called item and give it a texture red as, um, as an icon. All right, and then we'll create a script for it. And same thing as usual set some path for easy housekeeping. And a few variables to help us identify the item as well as save some useful information. We'll need the item grids. These will be loaded in independently from the data handler and then we'll have few things to help us select them. Quick and let's see, and a grid anchor. This is used for later when we're snapping them into the grid inventory. Okay, so we don't really need this. Actually, I'll be using them for now for, um, for debugging. I haven't really decided. Let's figure it out as we go. All right, first we need to load item and we'll load it by giving it an item ID. Hopefully it's an int and give it a void return type. We don't need that. Okay, so what we want is a path for the, for the code to load uh, the icons. So how do we do that? We can just format the string. Let's figure out what it looks like. And let's create a let's change it into well, we can load the name of the item from data handler. Let's call it uh, I think we can find it in item data. Locate it with change it to stream because I believe in here it was an int and then get it with name and then we can finish it up with dot png of course in the uh, in here and i believe that will do it Now let's put the image into the texture of the texture recon, uh, ugh, texture rectangle with a load. And let's change the grid value 
or rather load the grid value into a a different um, format for us to do calculations later when we need to place it into the grid container we have. Uh, I believe let's do string and item ID. Very good. We will use a temporary converter array. It's called converter array. And for every individual item in grid, or individual points in grid, technically. We'll just do a very easy conversion, call it that. Change that into I. And let's save them into the item grid save in the specific item scene. <laughs> All right, that should do it. Now we can try to load it up in our inventory and see if it works. Oh, almost forgot. Uh, before that, we should probably do a few things to the icon. All right, once we load it up, we wanted to do something. And let's say, let's start with um, let it follow us follow the mouse right when we pick it up we want it to follow let's just do a very simple global position and use a lerp function to let it catch up uh oops global position and get the global mouse position let's give it a speed let's do 25 times delta and i think that should do it uh in the start let's just set selected equals true actually let's first load the item with um just do one and see if it works i'm saving this and running it with f6 that looks pretty good and i wanted to follow the center of the mouse so let's go to 2d scene go to icon and let's say, i believe in somewhere where is the anchor uh, anchors preset so let it follow the center so once we do s6 to run the individual scene we'll be seeing that that is doing correctly and it's loading perfectly so so far so good let's go back to the inventory script and let's make the button do something let's call it uh spawner button let's do button spawn Go back to the scripts. Uh, no, I lied. Um, go to node and let's link the signal of the button pressed to here. And let's create a on button, sp button spawn pressed function. So let's create the item scene. So I don't believe I've set uh, item scene here. So let's do that. On ready, var item scene. Item scene. Let's preload it. Where did I put the item scene? Right here. Save it in there. Okay, looks good. New item, item scene. Instantiate it. And let's add it to the uh, inventory. New item. Okay. Um, new item dot load item. And for now, I'll be loading slot one for the sake of uh, easier debugging. But later on, I'll randomize it so we have different items spawned. And let's make sure the new item is spawned. Uh, wait, no, selected. Goes true, so it follows our mouse when it's spawned. And let's create a different variable to help us keep track of what we have, which is say item held. Uh, 
Okay. So item held equals to new item. Uh, let's go back to item, make sure we delete this. We don't need to be called here anymore. And let's run the whole thing. So right now it's that. If we click the button, we get an item that follows our mouse. Okay, uh, just to make it look better, I'm going to give the mouse a few changes. Let's say spawn item. And use the um, over override to make it slightly bigger. Say 12, not too small. Um, 20. 24. What the? Good enough. Okay. Just to play around with it. Looks pretty good. Let's go back to the script and let's see what we should do next. I believe we should start to uh, check the slots for availability with the great information we have. Now we're just you know, only checking the original slot. We want all of them. All right, and to do that, we will be making a few more variables to keep track of things. First, we'll have a current slot to keep track of what uh, slot our mouse is hovering over. And we'll have a camp place as something to see if we um, can place down the item. And then we'll use an icon anchor to help us snap later. Two and a few path links. See, so, uh, let's do a one ready. Usually I'll have one for each of the items here in case I need them. But for now, I'll only put the things that we kind of need. Scroll container and a column count. This is how many columns we set previously in our grid container. But, you know, instead of setting it manually, we'll just read into the, the grid container we had earlier. And let's do a set columns. I spelled this wrong? I did. Okay. All right, that should get us started on creating a few new functions. Okay, so instead of setting this into a different color, uh, for now, we're just gonna change them back. And so basically when the mouse hovers over slot, I wanted to check all the different grids that this current icon or this current item I'm holding is going to take. So what I'm going to do is to check um, for a few things. First, I'll set the icon anchor into a very large value. You'll see what I use this for later. It's kind of uh, initializing this with an arbitrary large number because we're using the, the smallest value. We want the current slot to be saved as the, the slot uh, scene passed to us by the signal. And then if item held, basically checking if we have an item, we will use a check slot availability. Avail availability, my biggest enemy and use the current slot to check for it. What does that do? Let's create it right now. Check slot availability. And the argument will be a slot. And they're technically all returns void, but I might not remember that later on. So forgive me, I forget. Okay, so what I wanna do is for every grid in the item held, which uh, we saved it into a convenient variable, item grid, item grids. We, the reason I created a specific grid and array to save all the the scenes of the slots is so that I can fetch them easy, easily 
with a with simple calculation. But we can calculate the grid ID or grid to check ID. Technically, it's an ID with the original slot, the slot we're hovering over at the ID of it, and add the offset. The offset is the grid value we saved uh, in the item grids. Basically, it's adding a specific number, basically x and plus y, uh, column count times y, which will get us an integer that is the corresponding grid ID in saved in our grid array. I think I'll add in a demonstration or some, some sort of graph later on once I'm done coding this. And we'll also add in a temporary check because in our array, it is a continuous line. We don't want the wrap around to happen. So we'll do a quick line switch check. In a very similar fashion, uh, we will mod it with the column count so that we know which line it is on. And then add the X value into it. So once it exceeds, uh, or once it's less than zero, that means it's you know, gone past the left side or that it exceeds the right side if the value is greater or equal to the column count. In that case, we will just set can place a false and immediate return. This is the case. Set the camp place to false and return. Because it doesn't matter how many other grids are available, if only one grid is unavailable, that means this item can cannot be placed down, we can just return early. All right. With that idea in mind, we'll just create all the checks to see if this thing can be placed. So the second check is to see if the grids are out of bounds of how many grids we have, if it's less than zero, or if it's uh, more than grids to check, more than the amount of slots we have, like the largest ID. We will just grid array dot size. We'll also return and set the cam place to false. And then we'll check to see the specific uh, grid is taken or not. We'll do that by putting the grid to check. Oops, grid. Just probably copied this. Into the grid of raid we saved earlier that has all the slots saved inside. So if the state of that is equal to, let's fetch the same value again. If it's a taken state, then we'll also say it is cam place false. Cam place false and return. Now, if we pass all the checks in all of the grids, then we will say it's cam place true. So far, so good. Now that I've checked it, I want to set it. Right, it's in a very similar fashion. I'll do a set grids. Love this. And let's um, do that right after the check slot. All right. um, I think uh, for the sake of ordering, I'll do a call deferred so that it's done after another function that we'll be adding in a moment. Okay, in a very, very similar fashion, we can just copy a few of it. This part is exactly the same. You, could, you fetch every individual grids and calculate the two values, grid the check and the line switch check. So in a very, very similar fashion, I guess, uh, if these goes out of bound, you just continue. Oops. But instead of returning, I'm doing continue here because 
once a can place is true, this means uh, this value or can place is false. That would also work. I am going to set the grids into a red color, red tint, tint. Right. So if it's wrapped around um, the outside of the grids on the one side, on this side, uh, it won't just make the grids over here red. You'll see what I mean in a moment. And then uh, line switch check. We have that done. Oh, for the, the sake of um, security, we also should check if it's smaller than zero or if it's larger than the size. Ray dot size. We should also continue. All right, we've done with the edge cases and let's set the grids. We finally set the grids. It's been quite a bit. All right, so, oops, grid array. We'll fetch the grids to check with a set color. Set color. Take the whole thing and get the states dot free. This is a camp place, okay? And simply enough with the else, we will just do the whole thing with taken, which will give it a red tint. Grids to check. Oh, it's grid to check. It's a uh, not plural. Same here. Okay. And aside from that, we will also save an anchor for snapping. It is basically saving the minimum of uh, the grids in there and take the top left corner of the image. Simply done with a oops, check. If it's less, then we save it. Uh, just two parallel comparisons. On the anchor dot y. Grid zero. All right, let's see if this works. We'll spawn an item. It's not working so far. After a quick period of debugging, I realized I missed a line here. Uh, once I created a new slot, or rather, when I'm setting the slots ID, they're all zeros because I forgot to put them into my grid array. So let's do that and add in the new slot. And now if I believe, we'll now see them correctly. Very good. Now, of course we don't want it to last. So we should create a clear method. And let's call it clear grid. Simple and very easy. We let's just clear all the grids in the grid array. Uh, the grid array we have. It's a dumb way to do it, but effective. Set color. Color. <clears throat> uh, with the states dot default. Default. There we go. And we just call it every time our mouse exits. I think that will do it. Let's take a look. It's pretty good. We already have the correct um, grids mapped. Now, 
I think we can do a little bit more with um, our items. Let's try to give it a rotation, right? In the game I was playing recently, uh, Dredge, you can rotate the fishes to better clear out your inventory, and I, I found that very fascinating. So I'm going to do that. Let's create a rotate item. Rotate item function. And I think it's better if we put this in the item to because we'll be rotating the grids and we'll save all the values into the item grid instead. In that case, I think I'm going to go into my item script and uh, code it in here. So also call it rotate, rotate item. And we're using a very simple way to rotate them. Basically the rotating matrix. I, every time we rotate just 90 degrees a set value and if we plug it into the rotation matrix i believe we'll get a very simple conversion as x equals the negative y and y equals x i think so what we'll do is let's create a temp y a very simple i believe there's a switch vector 2.switch Change. I don't remember what it's called, so I'm just going to do it a dumb way for now. And you, my friend, whoever is watching this, is probably smarter than I am. And you can try to look that up, um, how to do it in one line of code. <laughs> but, dumb as it is, it should do the job. Alright, and we will also want the visual effect to rotate. So let's change the rotation in degrees, because I'm lazy. Um, add 90. And I believe Godot will infinitely increase the value, increase the rotation. So let's just, for the sake of my sanity, uh, reset it bound to zero if it's greater or equal to 360. Okay, I believe that will do. Let's go back to the inventory and let's finish writing this part. So we'll change the, we'll call the item a rotate item in the item we're holding. So let's do that, rotation or rotate item. And once we rotate it, we want to recalculate everything. So let's do a clear grid, make sure um, there's nothing on the field. And then we'll just for the sake of safety, we'll check if there's anything, um, if our mouse is over in any current slot. If not, we can just skip the step. If we're, for example, spinning outside of the inventory. If not, slot mouse entered. Basically, we're doing the exact same thing, right? Uh, if it's entering, we're changing the item icon uh, anchor, and then we'll change the current slot doesn't really change. So we'll do a check slot availability, and then we'll do a set grid. And of course, uh, let's give it current slot. So I believe now the items will. Oh right, we also have to have something that calls this function. So we'll be doing that in the process. Uh, first, of course, we need to go to our project settings and create a input map. Let's call it a uh, mouse right click. I think that was the control. And also, let's let's give it a mouse a left click as well. Right. Save and save the inputs, corresponding inputs, and let's go back. All right, so in the process, if we're holding an item, we should check um, if the input is action just pressed, mouse right click. So if it is holding an item and I just click the right click, let's do a rotate item. I think that will do the trick. Let's give it a try. 
looks good and it's following the the correct um, grid rotation as well and the reds looks very good okay now we want to place the item down uh, to do that i think we'll be making a few different functions let's call it place item all right so first once we enter this once this function is called uh, we need to check if it actually can be placed or not if it cannot be placed or there's no slot we're hovering over we simply return this we can in this part we can also add in visual or audio cues to tell us it's nah, nah, can't place it down there okay so let's do that uh, let's do Calculate grid ID. Calculated grid ID. So first we want to calculate where we want this item to snap to. Right, this, um, this image icon to snap to. So we'll be calculating that using the slot ID that we're currently hovering over and offset it by the icon anchor that we calculated earlier. This is basically the top left of your current image or current item, uh, the top left most grid. Basically, we will do that, multiply by column count. Then we'll just add it to icon anchor dot, oops. Anchor dot y. Item held. Okay. And so once this happens, right, place item, I've calculated the grid ID. I will do a snap to. Function and we'll provide it with the global position we want it to snap to. And to get that, we'll just use a calculate grid ID to Pick that out from the grid array and get the global position of that global position. Okay, and we'll create the snap ID in or snap to function in just a moment. First, let's add it to our process function. That uh, if we click on something, we'll put it down. If input dot is action just pressed. Let's do left click, mouse left click, and we'll do a place item call. <laughs> okay, so this will call this place item. And let's go to the item and actually create the snap function. Not to destination. Uh, I think it will be a vector two. Right. So instead of using the process and lerp, I think we'll use the tween for this because we're not calling this over and over. And let's just create a tween. Oops. Get tree. Tree. One day I'll be able to do it uh, without any hiccups. Create a tween. Okay. This part is for. Actually, let's save that for one moment. Uh, let's just make the quote tween. Tween property. Property. Let's do self. Global position. Destination. I have no idea what just happened. Destination. And give it a time for it to go there. And might as well set the transition to uh, sign between the trans sign. Okay. And once it's been snapped to, let's make sure it's no longer selected. 
Okay, give it a try. Looks like it's uh, it's snapping itself to here. This is the top left grid, and it is um, snapping itself to the center of the image. So we need an offset, and let's create that. But uh, just for to make sure that all the rotation and the degree is correct, we'll do a little case by case. Thing. Uh, this is only for non-square items. If it's square, it doesn't matter. But if it's not square, you have to add this line to see which way it's um, rotated. The zero and one eighty doesn't matter. But if the, it is vertical, it's been that the rectangle has changed its orientation. You will need this to change. Nation icon rect. We'll change that by half. Else we will change the X and Y around and do the exact same thing. So we'll take the Y component and put in X and the X component put in Y. And then you do the exact same thing, well, except that I um, change the icon path size into this. And now I believe this will do correctly. Yes, very good. Okay. So also make sure once it is placed, I would like to um, get rid of, you know, the the item held that's checking the spots for free slots over and over. We will do that by clearing the, um, just doing the cleaning up after ourselves. <coughs> so we'll do a few things. First, we'll change the grid anchor of the item to the current slot. This is effectively saving uh, the value of where this item is. I believe I've added here. It's grid anchor. So current slot. And then I'll save uh, the value of the item into the slots. Which I'll do it like this. Grid in item held dot item grids. Let's check this. This should look very familiar to you. Um, I'm just going to copy it from a previous area. Here we go. And except uh, we are not using this, we're using the current slot because, in case you move your cursor around too much, I believe this is safer. And let's change the grid state grid array of the grid to check dot state set that to a taken state dot state dot taken and we also want to set the item stored into the item held so so now not only all the grids uh, are now taken, they also know what item they're currently storing. Right? They have the, the pointer to this item. And let's make sure this one has right this variable. Very good. And after all that, I believe we can now go to item held and get rid of it. And also clear the grid. Okay, let's see if that does the job as we think it does. All right, to properly test whether it works or not, we obviously need another function to pick up the item. And in a very similar fashion, we can do that right here. Pick item or item pickup, either way it works. So a very similar thing to do, right? 
if not current slot. So if we're not hovering over any slot, um, well, actually, let's do it in the correct order. So in the process function, we want to test. All right, if there's no item held, which is the else component, if input dot m is action just pressed, uh, a left click. Basically, we're clicking on an item. We're clicking somewhere to see if we want to pick up something. All right, and I'll also to make sure that um, this is safe. I'm going to see if it is inside the scroll container bounds. Get global rect. Remember the scroll container is this thing. This area right here. We want to make sure if I'm clicking outside of it, uh, it is not responding to anything. And this is the exact same way we do slots. We'll check if it has a point that is where our mouse is, global mouse position. All right, and uh, if it is in there, we'll do a pick item. And similarly, let's put that check also in here to be safe. And this doesn't matter because it's already uh, the, the right click has only one function. Okay, so so once we click left click, let's check if it's not our mouse is not over a certain slot, it's not hovering over a certain slot. We want to escape, or if it's not uh, the current slot does not have any item, current slot dot item stored. If it's null, then we just return. Wait, nothing happens. And now let's go here. Okay, let's give me some more room here. Item held is now the item in the slot, stored in the slot. Give it that. And now item held. Let's change, uh, make sure it is now selected. And for each grid in the item held dot item grids, right? We are fetching the information from the item, the item scene. We do a very similar thing. We are doing the variable grid to check it's equal to item held dot grid anchor. This is the zero zero, right? The ID of the zero zero slot. And then offset it by whatever the current grid is we're looking at the current point. Uh, similar way of doing it, the outside, uh, the offset. X plus Y times the column count. Okay, and let's put it or look for it in the grid array, the container. Give it the grid ID, grid to check, and see the state of it or set the state of it. Item not declared, um, item held, not item. All right, set the state into free once we pick it up. Dot states dot free. And similarly, let's set the item stored into null because we picked it up. And after all that, uh, let's do a check slot availability of the current slot because once we pick it up it is now looking for a open slot and whichever slot it was picked up also counts and the same thing set grids and do a call out deferred of the current slot okay now let's take a look to see if this works let's pick up another item now i can pick it up put it down pick it up put it down okay let's see if it's overlapping with another grid it is going to be red looks pretty good and let's see if the rotate also works yes 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 looks pretty good so far okay now let's do a few cleanup work uh, to make sure things move as smoothly as i i would hope for so first, let's when we're loading the item in the um, mouse button first, uh, instead of 
loading the exact same thing. Let's do a random integer. Actually, let's, let's do random range. What is the function again? Rand I range. There we go. Oof. And let's do one and four because we have four items here. Let's take a look. Take a look. So we have different items and they all look like they're, um, you know, working the same or working as intended. I can play this all day. Okay. <laughs> so another thing I want to clean up is this is scalable as I've promised. It is in the scroll container for a reason. So let's let's give it a few more. Uh, let's, let's give it 90 slots, lighting for slots. So you can see this is currently happening here. So if I, what happens if I attach um, an item to one of the grids and they roll out of bounds, right? They don't follow. And I don't like that, right? I don't want this to happen. And if you're, you know, dealing with this, I'd rather have them work in a uh, in better way. So what I'll be doing is I'll be moving the item around in the scene tree so that it would follow the grid container. How do I do that? Let's take a look. Let's go to place item. So once I put it down, I will tr move the item held into a different, uh, different parent. So let's do get parent. Get uh, remove child, basically remove itself. Sorry, remove the item held uh, from the scene tree, which is the base of the inventory. Get parent, remove child, item held. Actually, before doing this, let me give you a quick look at the scene tree, what it currently looks like. So this is the main. Inventory, color rectangle, blah, blah. We have the scroll container and we have the grid container with all the slots. And now if we spawn an item, as I've created, it is created a uh, parallel, rather, sorry, um, right as the child of an inventory. If I create more, we have more items, right? We have more items. Uh, when they're here, they don't, they're not bounded by the grid container. So what we want to do is when we place it down into the inventory, we want to place it down into the grid container. So what we'll be doing here, as I promised, is uh, remove the child from the, the base inventory scene tree and put it into the grid container, uh, which we already saved a path to. Add child of the item held. And uh, to prevent some jittering, which will happen like this, we will just set the item held global position to our current mouse cursor position. Global position goes to get global mouse position. All right, so right now I think it should do as intended. All right, now let's take a look at the remote inventory color now it's no longer here as you might notice it is now in here as an item okay so now when i scroll up and down it will no longer be in view and i think it works pretty well it is now scale and when they're outside they're not selectable either very good so the problem with this is if i do that go inside and when i pick it up it is now still inside the grid container we don't want that once we pick it up, we want to move it back into the outside of the scene tree, which we can do with a very similar way of doing it. We just in here. Um, let's put it. Let's put it here. Okay, we are changing the item held because we actually do need to store it. That's why I put it behind. Item held, and let's get the parent. Same steps, parent dot to remove child remove it from the current position the current scene tree and then add a child to well the the script which is the inventory the node attached to the script or the 
script attached it. No, do you get the idea? Item held. And same thing, let's do item held, make sure the global position is set so it doesn't snap. Global position, position is get, uh, get global mouse position. Now, I believe it will oh, get, uh, forgot a parentheses here. Okay, now it's now outside, but when I scroll it, it is now inside. If we look at the remotes, okay, when I pick it up, it is now outside. You can see, um, outside of the, the grid, and then when I put it down, it is now moved inside the grid. And I can just do this forever. It is quite a fun game to do, I would say. And there you have it, uh, a grid inventory, a scalable, resizable, grid inventory. Alright, and thank you for watching.